Now for the EFD group, Mr Farage. Thank you. Well, even by the standards of this place, today's atmosphere has been leaden. You know, a great global political leader, Mr Barroso, uh, comes along, and out of 750 members, 44 people turn up to listen. Why is that? Well, I've noticed something. I've been here 15 years, but in the last five years, something really big has changed. The European dream is crumbling, absolutely crumbling. There are a few maniacs in the front row here and in your commission who, of course, still want a United States of Europe, uh, but actually out there in the member states they don't, and most of the MEPs here. Yeah, they want a job. Yes, they want to get re-elected, but the enthusiasm for this project is dying. Why? Well, you've made two big mistakes. The first mistake was, of course, to extend the Eurozone. It would have been okay had it been just Germany and a few Northern European countries, but to bring the Mediterranean in to the Eurozone has been a disaster. And the second mistake was to allow the free movement of peoples to southern and to eastern Europe. You know, we in the United Kingdom, who've been the most open country with regards to immigration of any European country through a history that has lasted hundreds of years, now have 4,000 migrants a week that come to Britain from the European Union and stay for a year or more. And these are the two realities that have hit home to people. The EU doesn't work economically. And open door migration is fundamentally changing societies in ways that people don't want. And, and, and to listen to the economics. Mr. Barroso, you talked today about the possibility of an industrial renaissance in Europe, which sounded good. Lighter touch regulation, all very encouraging. And then you say, but we must pursue our climate change carbon targets. The Americans have gone for shale gas and reduced energy prices. The Chinese are digging up coal in quantities we can't fathom and building just their two coal-fired power stations every week. This policy of economic unilateralism on climate change, that's what's destroying jobs in Europe. And the electors are going to have a chance in 72 days' time to give their verdict. I suspect the next European Parliament will be very much more exciting than this one's been this morning. Frau McGuinness, bitte. Ms. McGuinness. Um, Mr. Farage, I hope you will answer my question, please. Um, you talk about excitement in politics and a leaden debate. With the greatest of respect, I don't want excitement in politics. I want people who work. Will you please commit to stay in this chamber and listen with respect to the responses of those who will be here? Your practice in the past has been to walk out. And could I say that you say that the enthusiasm for the EU is dimming. I think enthusiasm for UKIP is dimming. Well, had there, um, had there been a proper question there, I might try to answer it. Um, Euroscepticism is growing right across the European Union. Nobody here, not even the maniacs that believe in the project, would, would, would question that. It's coming in all shapes and forms. It's on the right, it's in the centre, and it's on the left. And the reason, of course, and you come from Ireland, so you should know better than anybody, the reason, of course, is that actually no one's ever given consent for a political European Union. The French uh, are clearly followed by the Dutch, rejected the Constitution, and they rebranded it as the Lisbon Treaty, and only one country had a referendum on that. That was Ireland, and the people of Ireland, the people of Ireland rejected it. So you can't tell me there is popular support for the United States of Europe. Mrs. Reading may believe it, Mr. Barroso may believe it, one or two in the front row may believe it, but the peoples of Europe don't believe it. The next speaker.